So Maokai is up. Yumi is up. What does Fnatic ban away here? Um, of course, I think with these bans, we might see a Kali Silas as the mid laner is a little bit skirmish heavy. Fiora banned. Yumi's available. Is T1 just going to slam it? Oh, boy. So Fnatic must have a good answer to this. You don't just give Yumi over no. on the red side. They must have an answer. We'll see what it is and whether it is good enough. But Maokai's open. Orin's open. That was the Fnatic special against C9 in their first game. Top jungle, good engage. Yeah. Just can get count picked quite easily by things like Trundle. Um, so we'll see what they opt into. But Zeus is Fiora now off the board. I think Wonder's taunting Zeus here with the Jax a little bit. I think yeah. they'll that in. So it's going to be the Lucianami here for Fnatic. Okay. This one's one of those aggressive answers into something like a Yumi. You're saying you can't give it away for free. You got to have a plan. You got to be ready. They're saying, all right, we're just going to push bottom. We're going to threaten these guys. Keep that pressure on. Yep, there's the Maokai as well. So they will pick the Nami up on three. They know T1 can't take away the Nami. So pick up the Maokai to deny Makes that sense. May as well. Makes a lot of sense. So what does T1 pick here with the, the Yumi? Will we see Sivir Yumi? I think that's the most common real pairing. Um, and then what could they pick jungle? I think Trundle is another one of them considering to Maokai. We saw that last game from C9, but Sejuani, very high prior with this tournament as well in terms of pick ban. Massive, massive tank there in that Sejuani. And as you were predicting, Sivir Yumi will be the duo to go up against the Lucian Nami. Sivir has that scaling power. She has that wave clear. And then that Yumi just being able to attach for even oh. more move speed, even more buffing. I hate that cat. Everyone <laughs> hates that Everyone cat. Everyone hates that Shout cat. out to Medic for providing numerical analytical reasons why Yumi is bad. <laughs> <laughs> bad to play against, not bad as a champion. Now we just need to find a bug for her as well, and then we're all happy. Yeah, we just check the boxes, baby. But now we're checking the boxes for the bans here in the second half of the draft. It will be the Jax banned by Fnatic. They want to keep that one away from Zayus. Do you think it's going to be just pure top lane focus or switched up a little bit? From so a couple options here. The Maokai is a flex. They could pick Orn here, Fnatic as well, and just play the Maokai Orn run back. But with the uh, bans on mid lane so far of mages, if LeBlanc's down and if things like Orianna are down as well, I wonder what the mid lane matchup will be. Silas Akali are the, the next one that I think of. Lissandra is another okay. one that could work as well. But with Jax Camille bans, I think Wunder either wants Orn, Maokai or Nar, something along those lines. Uh, and then they'll probably counter pick mid. The Sejuani, of course, is a flex for T1. Zeus has a couple games under his belt. Owner doesn't really have any in summer, but I don't think it's a champ that he'd be unfamiliar with. Just really want to pair that Sejuani jungle with things like Renekton, things like Set, something that can work really well on melees. That's why it's a bit easier to put it top, but the Renekton ban is coming out from T1 to deny that from Wonder. All right, so three top laners banned away in the second half of the draft. And there it is. You're talking Silas Sakali. Fnatic are immediately ready to go locking that one in. And it also leaves the Maokai still available as a flex. I think Galio or Silas here could work quite well for T1, unless they want to pivot to a Lissandra. But the reason I don't like Lissandra is because you're playing with a Sejuani. Lissandra Sejuani is so one-dimensional in being able to counter the play. Oh. This could be Zeus Yone. Yes! Or it could be Faker Yone. Either way, Zeus. either way, I'm ready for this. Oh, yeah. And Silas would work really well as another melee to facilitate that Sejuani jungle, we expect. And it is going to be the Silas Akali matchup. Skill matchup. A lot of skill expression, individual outplays in the mid lane. Melee champs across the board. Now it's on Fnatic. Where is this Maokai going? Is it going top into the Yone? Do you have a counter pick into the Yone here, Wonder? Um, or is it just going to be the Maokai top and pick something like a Jarvan 4. Could also be a Kali top, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, but, it's but gonna it, be, won't. it no, won't. It won't be, yeah. It'll yeah. be the Poppy jungle, and it'll yeah. be um, it'll be the Maokai top here. So Wonder running back the same champ, um, and the Poppy makes sense into the dashes from champions like Silas, Sejuani as well. You, it always feels so good playing that Poppy to be up against something that you can really shut them down with a steadfast presence, interrupt those dashes there a little bit. Both sides having a giant meatball on the front line there as well to tank up, play front to back if they need to. I just love the fact that we're getting to see what you described as a very skill matchup. But I mean, it oh. looks like we might just have Silas in top side and Yone versus Akali in mid. Oh, they saw back now. Okay. They were teasing okay. us a little bit. They were All maybe right. thinking I, about I didn't the Zeus Silas. Commit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But having a skill matchup with Faker and Humanoid. This is banger guaranteed, my friend. Oh, it is indeed. And we, let's not forget when T1 first debuted on the world stage here this year against EDG, they were playing Fiora Silas with the Yumi. Now they've got Yone Silas with Yumi and they steamrolled EDG with a similar... And it was Razork on the Poppy, upset Hilly on the Lucian Nami. So they've got a similar foundation to their initial draft. But that's a Yumi and that's Kari as Yumi. 
with a lot of melee champs on the top side for T1. Komiyoshi very comfortable on the Sivir, will just play to scale. Do we see any early game shenanigans is a question. Fnai could look for some kind of late invade. You know, Sejuani quite weak on the level 1 Yumi, similarly, despite the combat summoners. But with the 5 points on both sides, I don't think there'll be any early game level 1 invades. Yep, 5 point spread, line of scrimmage. Just gonna make sure nobody's trying to do anything too sneaky here early on. We can see junglers both hovering around that top side of the map means I'm expecting a red start for both of them, or red start, blue start, excuse me, and then working Minions from top to bottom. I'm excited to see how active these guys get in the early game. You were talking about focus around the mid lane. The thing is about this skill matchup, it's a double melee skill matchup. Mm. There's a lot of opportunities for a properly timed gank to really swing some things. Definitely. And both starting top side, gonna pass towards the bot as you highlighted. Early wards on the exact same bush on the pixel from the side of Fnatic and T1, but that ward on the Raptors entrance will spot out where Razork is starting. Could go Raptors red into bot side here, but it's also very common to just go Raptors and then full clear to bot, leave red buff up. We'll see what he does. Phase rush for the top jungle of Fnatic, and I think Wonder will have a little bit of a hard time against Seiyu. Hang on a second, Ignite dropped onto upset. They're just immediately going in at level one against this Lucian Nami. With the two combat summoner spells and how weak champions are at level one, they're saying, okay, you've got an aggressive duo, but we got a chance to just jump on you here early. Yeah, and trying to contest the push here. There's a couple more minions there for Fnatic, and they have got the sustain on both sides with these enchanters. Melee matchup mid means a lot of contest, and we expect there to be action in top side, but it looks like that'll be in isolation for now until a couple more levels come through for the Yone. Level six, there's a lot of kill pressure on this top side for either side, and Humanoid, really aggressive onto Faker right now, who will pop the potion. T1 actually get the bot push in isolation. I think they forced it out with the Ignite, playing aggressively, stepping up. Faker. Ooh. They're always willing to trade. I love oh, this. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. And that's kind of how this matchup works in a sense. Contesting creeps also, it always becomes so hard. Humanoid has no W here. Oh, Faker has gone in. Humanoid in trouble. He's walking towards the wrong way. The flash didn't work. Humanoid oh. wanted an outplay. Faker's still chasing. He Faker. goes in. Faker. Faker! He gets first blood, but he dies doing it. Wow, so Humanoid actually dashes back in there on top of Faker with the Shuriken, then flashes upwards and pops the W so he can't get auto attacked. Good mechanics coming out of the Fnatic mid laner. Manages to turn it into a one for one, but like you said, that's first blood for Faker Silas. The failed flash from owner there was it what ended up costing them, I do believe. That's what made that chase last as long as it did. Now Razork invading, gonna find owner there in his jungle. Faker has teleported back to the mid lane, as has Humanoid. Business will continue there. Razork immediately going in, manages to just insta-give that crab before owner can interfere. Razork, flash, slam, just beating the hell out of him, but it ain't gonna work, because Yumi's there to save the day. Owner getting away now, but Guma Yushi's gotta be careful. Razork and Fnatic still leading the way. Is this, this is what they need to be doing. Guma Yushi throwing out the boomerang, flashing away from a wall stun, and T1 retreats. Razork had no bot push, but he's playing with no fear as well. Manages to get the heal out of Gumayushi, trades his flash for it, but then he gets Gumayushi's flash on the back end of it. Owner's red buff is still up, and Razork's gonna start it up. He's calling Hillisang. You can see on the minimap, he's calling his support to help him out to secure this. Humanoid has a little bit of mid push too. I think Owner knows that this is being taken away from him. He needs yep. to be very careful not to face check his way into this red side because Hillisang spots him on that ward over the Krux. And Razork will pick up the red. A lot of trading back in mid. Humanoid trying to get this wave in. Probably going to look for a base afterwards. Oh, maybe a dive. Hex flash on the poppy, of course. Hilly's we'll see here if they too. pull this off. Hilly could flash over as well. Wouldn't surprise me if he does. There they go. Faker is in trouble. He's down. Fanatic. I said I wanted to see moves out of Razork, and we're getting them. Oh, we definitely are. Now look at the minimap as well. The amount of wards that are littered in that bot side jungle from Fnatic, as well as the play mid, just allows them to be able to push Owner out of his jungle, push Gumyushi and carry it back, Hex flash over these walls, stun Faker into the tower. And now Humanoid Zakali seeing the two kills, has picked up that Oblivion Orb, the Dark Seal, he will be contesting the mid waves, and of course in a melee versus melee matchup, it makes it so hard for Faker to step up. And this all comes off the back of Humanoid actually trading the one for one initially, so he can fight back and get the push when he comes back to lane. Very, very good stuff for Fnatic, having two kills on an Akali early. Everybody who's played League of Legends has played against Fed Akali at some point. Everybody knows it feels like the guy is just protagonist status oh. at that point. But Razork is gonna find Faker here in the river. Humanoid's coming to help him. Razork continues his chase. Faker's trying to get out. 
goes into the Drake pit. Hilly's coming around now, too. Faker fighting oh. back, using the Drake yep. knockback to make sure he makes his escape. That was really smart by Faker. He pulls the Dragon to push Razork away because two things will stop him. One, the, the Poppy W, if he times it perfectly, can stop him jumping over the wall and the stun into the wall. So Faker, good pull of the Dragon there. As he upside, held my breath for a second, dash forwards, but he's not in range of Guma Yusi. Not quite. That 500 range on the Lucian is a little bit limiting. They have that very far forward ward there in the second brush. But T1 just now going to have Faker going up into the brush, but Fnatic's bringing down more men too. Razork shows up. Nice steadfast presence to stop Faker from getting there. I would love to see Midwave right now. I think it's frozen. Faker is bleeding minions, so it actually ends up crashing into the tower. But look at this CS lead right now for Humanoid. Oh, yeah. Level 6 to level 4. Faker is very close to leveling up, but that's a full level lead right now for Humanoid. Upset. Going in for Guma Yushi, takes him down to 100 HP. He'll stay alive. They get that wave pushed up. It doesn't fully crash. Mm. Upset and Hilly will be able to clear these out. You can see how violent this game is getting around this bottom half of the map again. Level 6 to level 4, though, like you said, Faker is suffering in this 1v1. He really is. He'll manage to level up, but really far behind in creeps. Humanoid is actually quite close to level 7 right now, so Faker needs to recover. Very far down in creeps, down in gold, down in experience, and it all comes off the back of Razork finding him as he roams in that bot side jungle. And Razork might find him again, you know, has the Hex Flash. Humanoid, we'll see if he fast pushes his wave in with his Qs. But no, Razork's actually gonna go over towards the blue buff. And owner is coming out of base. Razork knows his window here. Should be able to pick this one up and the top crab as well. Zeus has had consistent top push but I don't think he'll be able to leverage it to collapse onto Razork in time. And this is another hit on Faker indirectly. Silas versus Akali, energy champion versus mana champion. Faker not being able to spam spells as much with no blue. Razork still hurting him. Going after this Scuttle Crab now. Uh -oh. His smite's on cooldown, so owner can just walk up, slap that one away, steal yeah. that one away. And Razork has to walk on home, but he's still happy taking that blue. Is indeed happy. Razork now hovering around mid. Maybe he's just trying to look to slow Faker down, hold the wave a bit so that Humanoid can catch it before it lands on the tower. We'll see if Humanoid pushes and looks for roams around the map. Faker taking his base. Every time we look down here on this bot side, there's a little bit of trading. Upset always wants to dash forwards, and he can when the wave's in a bit of a more stable state. You don't want to yeah. dash into that many minions. You'll always lose out on the trade. There's Yumi poke coming through. Razork about to take over with level 6. Owner similarly. There's the dash forwards, actually. Okay, Upset getting the culling. But into the minion wave go most of the bullets. Gumayushi recognizing he needed to take cover immediately. And they'll get this wave pushed up even further back in mid. It's still Humanoid with a massive farm lead and more minions to pick up. Faker's got to try to find opportunities elsewhere. Owner's going to start up the Herald, but there is a ward in the pit from Fnatic. They are sending Razork down. Zeus coming over now, too. Hilly is coming up yep. from bottom lane. There is no movement from anybody in the bottom lane of T1. Herald's still at about 3,000, down to 1,500 now. Razork still looking to fight, still looking to contest. Owner, will it be a smite fight? It is secured. T1 have the objective. The Nobody button. picked up the eye. He got the eye, but he'll die for it. T1's jungler flashing over the wall. You're dead, bro. What the hell? Razork matches the flash and gets the kill. I think the idea was flash out Glass Cone and then Herald recall. Maybe there was some shenanigans in his head of how he could escape. Upset had to give up a bot wave there and loses a plate because Hilly roamed towards mid. They're pressuring the mid tier one here. Razork knows that owner's bot side jungle is up. They're looking for camps down here, plates as much as possible. They're actually not even looking for the dragon just yet. So Fnatic come out ahead with a kill, but owner still gets the Herald. Hey, that Herald on average is worth two plates. Fnatic just got two plates. That evens out, yep. and they're feeling good about getting another kill. They get the flash out of the Sejuani, so less playmaking ability from that one. Of course, it does cost the flash from Razork, as you pointed out, too. But this is a 25 CS lead for Humanoid now. Faker is going to struggle to catch up a little bit. You would have to think. Faker's been dropping waves ever since he got dove mid by the Humanoid Razork at Lion level 5. He's not really been able to find anything here. So Humanoid fast pushes mid because Faker is giving up the wave to get here first. Then Owner manages to get the smite. I think it's the eye that he hits. We'll see what happens in the slow-mo. Manages to win out on the smite fight. It looks yep. like Razork pushes Owner into Wunder to get the CC chain. Zeus has to ult out to avoid the Malkai ult himself. And I think Owner here wants to flash over, Blast Cone over to Krugs, and then just recall on the spot with the Herald. But 
Razok managed to flash over the auto attack, gets the kill, and then back to live. Fnatic gets the first dragon in the game. Fnatic having an awesome look here in the early game. Three to one in kills. They got themselves at first Drake. Ten minutes in. The gold, however, is still very close. There's the Sejuani ulti, not quite enough range, but the flash to follow. Gumayushi gets paid. So that's a kill onto the Sivir. That'll help out Bot a little bit. Hilly gets rooted into the Sejuani ult slow, so he has no way out of it. Flash to flash trade. Top lane has just been a bit of a struggle for Wunder in isolation. Yeah. Kumayushi really wants plates. Owner might even drop the Herald here if they want to look for a full tower. Razorx here to cover. No TPs on the Fnatic solo lanes. Humanoid could try to collapse if he wants to with this huge level lead, but it looks like he's staying around mid. So, plates funneled into the Sivir. Actually, the knockback will buy time. Nice. Can they stop this Herald from crashing is the question. It's a 3v3 as of now. Humanoid still has not moved. Herald has to get through this wave. They'll have a little bit of firing time on it. T1 aggressively pushing this up. They really want this crash. Level up's gonna happen now yep. too. Okay, It'll I honestly, I love the attempt there from Fnatic and from Razork but it's not going to pay the dividends they wanted. The Herald's gonna get the two plates. Bottom lane turret barely hanging on, and T1 go up by about 700 gold. 500 gold lead on the AD carry roll there for Gumiushi. We'll be able to get towards his Mythic a little bit quicker than Upset. We know the power of the Lucian Gale Force when the Nami has Mandate as well. That's the big spike for that lane, but still a little bit far away because of the Serrated Dirk as well. So Humanoid's had so much mid-push and he's up so many creeps, but he's not actually transferring his pressure to bot there. I wondered if the Akali could move down here to threaten the 4v3 to stop the Herald. Upset is going to chunk out Gumiyushi a little bit, but no kill pressure there. Yep, Gumiyushi's just able to walk that one all the way back off. Fnatic in this bottom lane, the Lucian Nami, the one-item power spike where they start to feel so fearsome. That's when I want to really see some of that kill threat coming out as Gumiyushi still has 23 minions left to go on that call before he's going to get a gold infusion. And now oh, let's see if they flash. can get Hilly again. There's no flash available. The Boomerang Blade comes out. The Spell Shield is beautifully timed. Upset both summoner spells to get away. Owner always hovering bot. He knows his win condition on this on the spot side. They can't win the 2v2 mid and Zeus is doing so fine in isolation and shutting him down won't really net Fnatic that much because it's your tank top jungle. Razok might be able to smite this one away. Oh yeah, easy money there. Just yoink it right from over the wall. Zeus won't get that. And then back here in mid, Razork again looking for an opportunity, potentially on the Faker. Owner's around, but there's no Sejuani ulti. So Fnatic have actually sent Wunder bot. He actually TP'd on that tower to save it, just to stop Gumuyushi from being able to pick it up. And then upset base and ran towards top. They're trying to mismatch the lanes here to put their tank into the Sivir to deny any kind of dives. But I think Gumuyushi will then run top to match the Lucian when he sees upset because Fnatic want to avoid the T1 bot lane as much as possible. I think they know that they're losing out on the 3v3 right now. And upset still needs that Gale Force. And if we're talking Mythics, you can see right there on the left side of your screen, the first one completed there for Guma Yushi, the Kraken Slayer on the Sivir for plenty of DPS. Back here in mid, owner just trying to help Faker get this wave shoved up a little bit. Faker down almost 35 CS in this mid lane matchup. As Razork walking through that top side river, he has his bottom lane and support right next to him. Owner knows he can't contest this. He does indeed, and now T1 have evened up the lanes. They've matched the states that they've wanted. They've put Zeus back into Wunder. They've put Gumuji back into Upset. Look at Upset Summoners. No flash, no cleanse. If Sejuani is even around or in a top rush, he's basically dead, so they have to give up a lot of this push. It's Humanoid that's holding Fnatic in this. It's Humanoid with this big lead, as you just highlighted, that can push in waves and move whenever Fnatic need him. So that'll be their band-aid for the side lane differences right now. And one minute on the Dragon. I wonder if T1 decides to swap back because now Gumiyushi's moving mid and Faker's moving top. A lot of lane movement coming in here, but Zeus will he get the grump? Zeus going in, wants to steal it away. Just fighting against Wander, snaps right back to where he began. This Yone in isolation, you've been talking about the advantages he's built. It just feels so good to get a meatball to just beat on your free farming. <laughs> you do whatever you yeah. want, and he scales up for free as a champion that is just absolutely frightening with a couple of items. Yeah, especially with a Yumi on his back. We'll see if he can get to that two or three item spike on the Yone and shut down the carries of Fnatic. Wonder will be more of a frontline team fight utility. Not really expected to win the lane. 30 seconds on this track, and how does Fnatic play this out? Because Humanoid's their strongest member, but he's yeah. on this top tier one and with no TP. So T1 could opt to the 4v4. I think they're much stronger in that sense. 
She's about mid push, and who can get the objective first? Aeos will pick up this tower, but there's no wave behind him. Needs to be careful. Yeah, I think he overestimated oh, yeah. how quickly he could take that down there. Had to spend the fate seal to get Wonder. back out. Wonder flashing forward, flash for flash there as Zeus walks his way out. He'll pay for that one a little bit. Classic Wonder drops the lap the second Zeus flashes away. We'll see if he tries to stop his base here because Drake is spawning. Zeus will be able to TP back to this bot tier one. Humanoid is now moving from the top side. It looks like, no, hang on a second. He's going back to the lane, but Shield Bow picked up for Zeus. Exactly. That's the critical thing right there. This item giving so much more survivability in a team fight where he could otherwise be focused down more easily. And now the Drake, the Hextech Drake. 9% attack speed and 9 ability haste is going to feel nice no matter what champion you're playing. Fnatic, of course, got that first Ocean Drake for themselves. The score is tied 3-3. Three to three. The gold favors T1 by nearly 2k. Zeus going in this time with Soul Unbound yep. to make sure nothing bad happens. Look at the gold lead in top 1.5k in isolation. First brick over to Zeus. Both mid laners have TP on this top side. Dragon is up. Both bot lanes coming out of base as well. I think both teams want to contest this dragon. The easy play for Fnatic could be just to drop the dragon and then move towards Herald if T1 tried to contest, but they're going to start this one up. Upset's coming out of base. There's a TP from Faker on bot wave. He'll match with Zeus on okay. the bot side as a flank. Owner might come down here as well. Gomusha a little bit splits, will group up with his team. Now Fnatic could just decide, let's go Herald. We've got their TP. Let's try to get their top tier one on cross map. But that'll t deny uh, a second dragon from them. Mid wave contest coming in. So no dragon taken by either side. Owner's got Caria attached to him. So he'll move back down towards the Drake now. And okay, T1 are just going to go for this. Humanoid is top, but he has a teleport. Fnatic don't seem to be wanting to commit that to this. Razork's going to walk up and try to see if he can steal this one away. Poppy LT mm -hmm. came through. Drake is secured. Razork jumps into the Faker. Humanoid's made his way into the oh, fight man. now. Faker just instantly dead. Not looking good there as Wonder and Humanoid look to find oh, a little bit more. But they seal his fate. Humanoid is down, and Zeus tries to fight, but he falls next. Wonder burns away to the Ignite as Gumayushi looks for Hillisang. Upset dashes back over the wall, and Owner is ready for the flash follow. Cleanse gets upset away. Razork tries to rejoin with his bottom laners. Owner goes in, and Hilly tries to flash. He'll escape for now. The solo laners fall on both sides. It's the jungle bots that fight to the death. T1 trying to chase Fnatic down there. They managed to get a lot of summoners out of the Fnatic squad, but it's Zeus who turned that fight for T1. It looks so disastrous. The second Faker basically got caught and died instantly. T1 won't be able to find an objective for this, and they picked up the Dragon. Base is coming in. Next objective will be the Herald. We'll see if we find another 5v5. One of the stories that has always followed Faker throughout his incredibly long and accomplished career is how teams will focus him and he'll absorb the pressure. He's been focused a lot this game, and Fnatic weren't stopping in this fight. He certainly has. So this bubble from Hilly seals the deal because the Poppy ult misses. If that hit Humanoid, maybe he could live and get out. So Humanoid goes forwards. Now watch Zeus here. Pops the E and then manages to get a lot of damage onto Wonder. Then dashes through Humanoid, knocks him up, gets the ult, and takes down the mid laner. Turns into a 4v4. It's on upset, but it takes so long to get Zeus down that by the time he does, Wonder also falls. The 3v3 is winning for T1 with the Yumi. Upset being low, Razork being low. It's just a case of get the hell out of there. Upsets cleanse. That is twice this game now that it has saved him from an otherwise grisly fate. So getting a lot of value out of that summoner spell, especially against the Sejuani. But now let's take a look at how much damage actually got done. You can see it's the 80 carries top of the charts for both sides and those tank junglers yeah. leading the way right behind them. They really are. So this is a bit of a precarious situation here. So Fnatic's on the Herald, but they're losing their mid tier one. Hillisang and Upsetter split. T1's going to engage on this three man. Baker comes out with the stolen Maokai ulti. Now the real Maokai oh. ulti comes back. Poppy disengaged. They want to separate T1. Zeus is going to be focused first. He had to get away, but now Humanoid's in the back. He's looking for Owner and Faker. Humanoid is caught. You can focus him again and again and again and again and again and again and again, but Faker finds his way. The Shuriken into death there. Razork hit a crucial two-man knock with that Poppy ultimate, and Humanoid decided to follow through with his E, I believe. Fnatic get the Herald, they lose Humanoid and they lose their tower. Second items coming in here for T1. Gold leader stayed pretty consistent around two to two and a half thousand gold. These teams going very back and forth. Faker finding a kill there. Here's another look. So Faker takes the Maokai ult and they collapse from mid. Watch this knock from Razork. I think as he knocks, Humanoid hits his E onto Faker. So Humanoid says, hang on a second, maybe I can kill Faker here with the Shuriken. Decides to take it. 
despite the fight basically being won, jumps on top of the Silas, owner notices, and now he's in a 2v1, gets stunned up in his W, and can't R2 out in time. By the time he does, he falls. Nicely done there from T1, overconfident from Humanoid in his ability to take out that enemy mid lane. And now T1 commanding still about a two and a half thousand gold lead. They're gonna look for the top lane tier one turret. Gumayushi, he's got his Yumi locked and loaded. The ignite onto Wonder. That tree is going down. Gumayushi picks it up, but Fnatic are looking to trade back. Racing a Herald for turrets often does not oh. work. Owner jumps over. Zeus follows up. Hilly's trying to get away. T1's in hot pursuit. Owner's grabbing the first kill. The Herald dies to the turret. Razork's gonna be next. Upset tries to provide covering fire, but Humanoid's made his way in. Yeah. He is yeah. cheated, and Gumayushi is ready to catch the pass. Humanoid again trying to get away. A double kill back over to Faker. Humanoid running, running, running. The only man left standing in Fnatic colors. T1 collapsed so beautifully onto Fnatic's push there from topside with the TP from Faker. Huge step up by the top jungle of T1 to shut down Hillisang, to shut down the bot lane of Fnatic. And now they're going to get themselves a Baron as well. Four kills and an Ash. T1 just blew open the game. Absolutely incredible sequence of events. Watch this again. Zeus on the side, owner on the opposite side. Ult lands onto Hilly. Zeus pops the ult as well to land onto Hilly too. The TP coming in from Faker is just all about buying time. The three men top side just running Fnatic down. They have to split. Razor gets caught after Hilly. And then Humoroid comes from the from the side here, but it's Faker steal Poppy ult that knocks him out here. Humoroid actually uses the E just one second before the E2. He gets knocked back and he gets knocked into Gumayushi. Faker takes down upset and then Fnatic, uh, T1 turns towards the Baron. This game went from very close, but T1 favored, to Fnatic now having to fight for their lives. This is not what they needed here at just 22 minutes into the game. Remember in their last game, it was a similar early Baron against them. They could Zeus. not recover. Zeus Whoa. ready to fight, oh my God. ready to win. I called him the protagonist, and I meant it. 1v3, and he already got the first kill. Now he might find a second. Wonder wants to get away, but Zeus will barely fail to kill him. Gods are bleeding here. Zeus almost gets the 1v4. If he got that first kill with the Triumph, I think he could have turned it with the lethal tempo stacks. He does fall. T1 get this bot tier too. They managed to get the Baron buff off of the Yone, so that helps in the push, but it doesn't stop Gumuyushi and Karia in their tracks to get there. Tower, they might move towards mid here. Fnatic don't have enough wave clear to stop this push. Humanoid's up in eight, but he doesn't have TP. He just used it towards the top side. So this Baron netting them a couple of objectives. They got Zayas, but it took so many men and so many resources. T1 punches back harder. They'll secure the tier two in bottom, secure the tier two in mid. Faker just gets his recall interrupted, but Fnatic, no, they can't do any more than that. Faker just getting interrupted again. Everfrost gonna slow him down. He can walk this one off, no problem. You would think, eventually. <laughs> Razork wants to delay him as much as is, possible. Razork is being the most obnoxious poppy yeah. possible. He really is. And <laughs> despite Faker being down so far behind in gold and experience, he manages to find a couple kills and fights to get him back in the game. This is the top dive. So Fnatic recognized that T1 are going to play 1 3 1 here and just destroy their base. They need to get a Baron buff off of someone. Zeus does so much damage to kill Humanoid, then gets stunned up. Manages to get the lethal tempo fully stacked up. Nice W there to stop the dash from the Yone into the knockup from Hidasang. If he took down that Maokai with the knockup, I think he would have turned and killed Razork and Hidasang too. But game of inches, Fnatic trade one for one. Shut the Yone down. And now here comes the top push. Bot it, bot outer tower, uh, bot inner tower, mid inner tower. Now it's going to be top. And ward lines, I think, tell so much of a story in a game of League of Legends. And you can see right now, there's really not a whole lot of wards outside of the Fnatic jungle. They are in pure defense mode. A single control ward placed down in their enemy jungle on the backside of the red buff. But everything else is just Fnatic trying desperately to hang on to the territory they have. This is their last structure standing outside of the base. And T1 is moving towards it fast. Faker ejecting part of the front line. Oh, Hilly is caught, and Faker is on a rampage. Wonder, looking to see if they can follow this up. Faker getting away for now, but the Yumi ulti comes through. Now Wonder's been baited in. He tries to heal it up, but he can't do it. 
T1. Get it done. Humanoid knows he be. He can't join that fight. I think didn't want the fight in the first place, but Faker forces it. They're going to crack the pace open. Tier 3 will fall. Will I get the inhibitor as well? 30 seconds on window should be easy pickups. Faker actually TP's bot there to defend the tower to deny an objective bounty. And they can continue to play on these two lanes, top and mid. I think two inhibs will fall here unless Fnatic can find a miracle fight. You can see Faker chasing Humanoid on the minimap to slow him down as much as possible while T1 destroy these structures. Kyria jumps back to the safety of his team. The mid lane inhibitor drops. Owner dashes forward. Hilly throws out the wave, but it's going to go right through the uprights. No lockdown, no control. Fnatic, they lose two inhibitors. Faker's jumping in. They're seeing if there might be an angle here, but they call it too risky. They want to back away from this one. They already just smashed the base of Fnatic. Oh, they've just demolished it, really, haven't they? And they didn't lose anything. You can see that bot tier one for T1 is really low HP. Would have been an objective bounty for Humanoid, but Faker doesn't give them absolutely anything. Take a look at this dive again, because Faker, using the Poppy ult, actually knocks Razork out, and then he finds Hillisang after owner lands the ultimate into Everfrost into the chain. Absolutely one shot, and then it's a 3v4. Gumyushi is a bit zoned away, but Faker with the W and the flash out manages to stay alive. Faker was so focused and so behind and so targeted by Fnatic in this game. He's done a great job coming back into it. 5-3-1 and one here on the Silas. He's got his Everfrost, he's got his Zonias. He's ready for playmaking. Razork has used the Steadfast Presence already. He's trying to get away. He's got locked down. He wants oh, to knock him away, beautiful. but it just doesn't work. Guma Yushi's got the Spell Shield. He's got the reaction time. He's got the kill. Fnatic. 4v5 for the next 35 seconds. And T1 have a bot wave coming in. This could be three inhibitors down for Fnatic. That's as good as game. We'll see if they try to defend it. Upset really low on mana, has to base. Wonder might be caught here by Faker. Faker just gonna go in, no fear. Ready to start this off. Now Kai ulti continues flying out. Humanoid wants to jump forward. This Akali that had that lead early on has not been able to answer T1's game plan. And now they'll knock down the last remaining tier three turret, the last remaining inhibitor. And it's gone. Fnatic don't decide to take the 4v5. They're so far behind at a numbers disadvantage. You can't really blame them for giving that up. But now super creeps will be flooding into their base. T1 will hold them at their nexus. And Fnatic will have to make a last stand eventually. But T1 are just too damn strong. It's do or die for Fnatic right now. Upset fires off the calling. Zeus jumps in. It immediately demands a response. And Hilly's ulti is used next. Baron spawning now. It's alive, it's on the map, and it's T1 with total control. Yeah, T1 aren't taking their foot off the gas. The creeps are pouring in, but they can secure a Baron before they land towards the Nexus. Buff up all of those super creeps. And with TP on Zeus, he can take a base if he wants to TP back in here. Faker will stick around. I think Gumayushi will stick around as well as the waves come in, unless he has a huge IE in base. Probably has a lot of gold. It's just a question of how quickly T1 to close this out. Looks like Gumushi's going towards the Grop then, so they're saying, let's get four items on Sivir, let's just make this clean and easy, there's no need to overforce anything, and they'll come out of base with their Baron buff. And Faker gets revenge, stealing those blue buffs back for what he lost early on in the game. This man has done some awesome stuff here in this one. T1, sitting on, eh, what's the math on that? About 11, 11.5 11, yep. in terms of gold lead. This is almost insurmountable. They're gonna, they would need to conga line down mid one at a time, two or three times in a row for Fnatic to really have an angle here. It feels so impossible to defend against this lead. Yeah, T1's game plan just fantastic from start to finish. Match the 3v3 bot side, give up mid push and just let Zeus play in isolation. Fnatic had a lot of leverage through Humanoid, but now he's even with Faker. The knockback's gonna land onto Razork. Here we go. Wonder on the front line. They'll find a little damage onto him. Yumi ulti goes out. Humanoid's locked down. In the smoke, he's still nearly killed. Humanoid has to go right back into the fountain and heal back up. But time is ticking, and it ticks against Fnatic. The tanks are half health. The turrets are lower. They're both gone. Nexus exposed. T1 going in again. Humanoid's already down. They're trying to find a calling. They're not going to find anything. Fnatic will fall, and T1 takes it off. They get revenge for the first week of groups. Fnatic fall to T1. Very similar composition that we saw them run against EDG. And Yumi is such a powerful champ when you give over skirmishes like Yone and Silas. And even Sivir is a hyper carry. So many targets and carrier can sit on. And 
They got the better hand of the 3v3 bot side, and they managed to snowball it across the map. Faker found his way back into the game, and this group is shaping up to be a very messy one with Fnatic now losing their two games. They need to beat EDG. Three wins is the sweet spot for tiebreakers, and T1 just reached it. This is truly a spicy day so far. Fnatic fans obviously not happy about these first couple of games. T1, I like what we saw from Fnatic in that early game a little bit with Razork finding some of the moves, focusing on the Faker, getting the Akali ahead, but it just wasn't enough. Back into bottom lane at what was it, minute two in the game, seeing them immediately go in yeah. versus